Hey everybody, Brandon here, also known as Cactus Juice in the Steam community. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a quick drive scenario so that you can publish your route on the Steam Workshop. If you didn't know, the Steam Workshop is a place where you can share your routes or scenarios for Train Simulator with the entire Train Simulator community. And for a route, one of the prerequisites is to create at least one quick drive scenario. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now the best practice is to create a quick drive scenario for one direction of your route and then create a second quick drive scenario for the opposite direction of your route. So in the case of my route, the Northeast Corridor, New Haven to Boston route, I am creating a quick drive that takes you eastbound towards Boston South Station and I'm creating a second quick drive that takes you westbound towards New Haven Union Station. So for my route I'm going to be creating two quick drive scenarios. So if you didn't see what I did I was on the main menu and I went to the build section. From there I click on the scenario tab up top and then select your route. Now from there you're going to click new scenario at the bottom. From here, you're going to give your scenario a name. Usually it's something like QD, which stands for Quick Drive, and then the direction that you're heading in. So if I'm heading towards Boston, I'm going eastbound, so Quick Drive East suffices. You scroll down to the type of scenario you're creating, and you select Quick Drive. From there, you can select which location the Quick Drive will begin at. It doesn't really matter at all in the grand scheme of things, so I just chose the root origin and then click create. Now it's going to be creating the scenario right now and then it will pop you into the, the scenario editor in a moment. So let's wait for that to do its thing. In my case the root origin happens to be at Kingston, Rhode Island. Alright, so we're loaded into the editor. This is the scenario editor by the way. And in the scenario editor we can't edit any of the root assets so if I go to click on certain things like buildings or track or whatever it's not selectable the only thing I can add or delete are scenario specific objects so in order to create a starting point from which somebody can spawn a train to go somewhere else in your route you need to go to the track infrastructure section and then right at the very top you'll have a marker called the, the player spawn point marker now you're gonna place this anywhere really preferably near your track where you're gonna be spawning this AI train and then once you do a left click on the track you're gonna have this bi-directional arrow type thing pop up now you're, this is where the very front of the train consist is going to spawn okay so you click and then move the arrow in the direction to which you want the train to go in this case I'm on track 2 and I want the train to move eastbound and the arrow happens to be pointing in the right direction if it isn't pointing in the right direction let's say you wanted to start on this track but go that way you could hold shift and then click left click on that box and the arrow will change directions click again and it will go back to its normal orientation so now that we have told the train which direction to go and where to start at double click at the very base the bottom of this diamond icon click on the shaft of it the very bottom of it and this properties tab will pop out on the right hand side now this first section where it has the text unknown start that is going to be the name of the station that you're starting at this is Kingston station in in South Kingstown Rhode Island so I'm going to name this Kingston okay now this next drop down that has back front and center you might be wondering what the hell does that mean that's where your consist is going to spawn in relationship to this marker if you select back 
the whole train will spawn way back there. If you select front, the front of the train will spawn here. If you select center, the exact center of the consist will spawn here. We want the front of the train to start at this point. So the business car can load passengers on the high level platform and the coach cars can load passengers on the low level platform. That happens to be the way Kingston Station works. Next, you're going to choose whether the track has overhead wires, a third rail, or a fourth rail in terms of electrification. Excuse me. Electrification. Now, if you're running a freight line that has no electrification whatsoever and it's purely diesel, you're going to leave these options blank. You're not going to check any of them. But in my case, since I'm running Amtrak electric train sets, I'm going to be choosing overhead wires. If you're running something like a subway, if you were recreating a subway line, subways have a third rail, so you'd select third rail as your source of electric power. Now here comes the tricky part. You're going to left click on this flyout and then press the number 9 on your on your keypad not the number the normal number 9 on your keyboard but on the keypad you know that area where it has the plus sign and the minus sign and the num lock and all that you're going to press that number 9 and that'll open up this map of your route so once you have that map open you are going to go to where you want the train to stop first. So in my route, when a train leaves Kingston Station, it's not going to stop until it reaches Providence, Rhode Island. So you get scrolled in to the tracks that you want the train to stop at, and then you left-click on this green plus sign on that right-hand flyout. Left-click on that. And then you're going to left-click on the green line that represents the platform you want the train to stop at. So I want it to stop on this outermost track, which is track 2 in Providence. So I'll left click that. And it pops up as a destination here in the flyout. Now at this point, you can change the name of the station as it is displayed in the quick drive menu when you're selecting a station. If you wanted to say something else other than Providence, you could type it here. But for these purposes, I'm just going to leave it as Providence. Now you'll notice that this other option to the right of that popped up, VIA. Now, let's say that stopping at this station was not a requirement. The train could take any of these tracks to get to its next stop, and it didn't have to stop here. You could uncheck VIA and the train wouldn't route itself so it had to stop at this platform. It could take any of these routes to get to where it needs to go. But if you have VIA selected, it's telling the quick drive scenario, hey, I need to go to my destination via this station. So route me to this exact platform on my way to my final destination. So let's say you didn't even make Providence your final destination. Let's say your final destination was Route 128 up here in Westwood, Massachusetts. If you selected Route 128 as your final destination and you left VIA selected at Providence, Track 2, the train would be routed to Providence Track 2 on the way to Route 128. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, now let's say that you're trying to recreate a realistic timetable and one of the station stops, let's say Ruggles for the MBTA. Not all trains stop at Ruggles. So if I was selecting Ruggles as a station stop and the train didn't have to stop there, it could go straight by it to Back Bay if it wanted to. I could uncheck VIA, and if I did not select Ruggles as my final destination, the train will simply go past Ruggles without 
being routed to that platform. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, let me just add a couple other stations. Get rid of Ruggles. Let's add a couple other stations to our quick drive. And let's end, I don't know, Boston Track 8. And since I don't want the wording Track 8 in the quick drive listing, I'll remove Track 8, press Enter, and everything's cool. These friendly names are the names that it will show up as in the quick drive menu and select a quick drive. Okay? So now we have a quick drive set up. I'll press F2 to save the scenario. And I'll hop out of the scenario and let's go to select our quick drive. It'll just take a moment. Alright, so I'm on the main menu and I selected quick drive. I chose my consist. I wanted to sell the express train set. I chose my route. And now you'll see that our quick drive options have shown up. In the beginning, I told you guys I'm starting at Kingston Station in Rhode Island. And these were the possible places that we could choose as a destination. So let's say I wanted to choose Providence as a destination. Click start and the train will load at the platform ready to go to Providence and it will have everything calculated, a predetermined path, all the necessary switches and signal points set in order to get me to my destination. And it loads just fine. If no errors pop up that means the track is has perfect integrity it's contiguous all the way to the destination. It's electrified all the way to the destination. There's no skips in electrification because we selected this as an electric quick drive. There's no errors whatsoever. I could drive the train and I have clear signals all the way to Providence and it says stop at Providence. That's the goal. Now that's the most basic application of quick drives. Let's say you wanted to, I don't know, go to a different platform and you had to switch tracks at a certain point. Or you were having some routing, some pathing issues, and it was routing you to a different track that you didn't want it to. You want it to stay on the same track. Because that kind of stuff happens. It It's really random and... Let me show you an example. I started a train at South Station once and I wanted it to stay on this track, track 1. But it was constantly routing me over to track 4. Or no, track, excuse me, track 6? Track 4 or track 6? Um, but I wanted it to stay on track 1 all the way to Back Bay. So what I had to do was force it to go via one of these destination markers. So let's say I start another quick drive right here. I'll just get one set up really quick. I'll just call it Boston for now. Spawn at the front, overhead, left click, num9, open up the map, we'll go to Boston. If I wanted to stay on track 1, which is this track right here, I could set this destination marker, Tower 1 Interlocking, as a destination, have it go via that destination, but the problem is you could select that as a station stop in the quick drive menu. In order to make it so you can't select a destination marker as a final destination, just remove the friendly name completely, press enter, and it won't show up as anything in the quick drive menu. It won't even be selectable. So now the train is programmed by me to go completely through this destination marker on its way to its next destination. So it will be routed on track one instead of the programming of the game figuring out hey I should switch the train over to track 6 no don't do that just leave it alone oh and by the way that's track 2, track 1, track 3, track 5 not track 4 and track 6 
track four and track six would be off to the right, I think. Whatever. Um, but yeah, you get it. You can play with the programming like that by having it go via certain destination markers. And I had to do certain things like that when it came time to do pathing around Clinton, Connecticut. I believe I had to create a couple destination markers, and I just gave them not random names, I just decided to say, hey, we're on the New Haven to Boston line, track two, or something like that. So I'll show you that right now. Yeah, so I created these little markers, and they have the name NHB line track one and NHB line track two. Because I was having an issue where any train heading west towards New Haven would want to get routed onto this wooden track over here, and then, yeah, I didn't want that. So I forced it to go via this destination marker, so it would totally skip that section and just continue on the way I intended it to be. So you're gonna, you might have to run into a point where you do your own programming to tame the beast, so to speak. Um, once you have your quick drive scenarios created, you have all your start points and destination points, and whether it's a diesel locomotive starting there or an electric locomotive, you're at a point where you can publish your route on the Steam Workshop. And the way you do that is go to the main menu, click on the build section, go to publish, select your route, write a little description, give it a name, select a cover screenshot for it, whether it's public or private or just your friends can see it, what country the route is based in, the type of, elect, uh, type of locomotives that primarily use that route, click that you agree the terms and conditions, and then publish your route. Okay, and that's really all there is to know about getting a quick drive scenario set up so you can publish your route on the Steam Workshop to share with everybody. Thanks for listening to my tutorial. I hope it helped, and there is a lot more information to come in the future. Thanks. Bye.